Time once again for the Fishy Rob Gastronomical Tour of Portugal 2024 to get away from uh, the English weather in January. It's not a great place for me in, to be really with the boat. Uh, very rarely we get the boat to sail in January due to wind or too much rainwater. Um, so off we go. Off to Gatwick Airport. Up we go. Two and a half hours later, we can see like clearer skies and green and then we come and uh, here we are in Portugal again. Quick check around, run around. I uh, did the first week on my own because I like to just make sure everything's where it should be and the restaurants are all what they should be and what have you. And also to say hello to friends I've made out there um, without impacting the fishing. So um, Formosa was full of actions from the very first moment. This is um, an estuarine system within Barrier Islands. That's my friend Maggie's birthday, uh, 2nd of January. That's what we do. And then on to all the marks, really. Beautiful scenery as expected. The farm pond kicking out fish as expected. Uh, it was all looking quite good. That's the odd late, a big reservoir that was significantly down. We were catching fish off the top of that dry ledge last year. Uh, Christmas decorations still around, farm pond again. Um, and then too many terrapins in the farm pond this year. Uh, then I invited a friend of mine um, to come and fish with me. Uh, perfect low tide, half five in the morning. Uh, and we had uh, myself and Vitali, my friend Vitali, who lives out there. We had over 20 bass and spotted bass between us that morning, which was actually the best catch of the trip uh, for those. Nice big toasty uh, and off up to the reservoirs. Reservoirs were kicking. Um, Although they were low, we had to learn them again from scratch because it changed everything. But uh, uh, Vitaly had a cracker there. Um, yeah, it was all looking very good. Uh, we tr tried pushing it even further, went up through uh, Matola, where that lovely orange tree is, where we stopped for coffee, and then onto the River Guardiana. Um, we didn't get anything on the Guardiana, but it was looking good, very good. Um, eagles were there. It's always nice to see the eagles. Uh, worth it to go up there all the way up there just for those really um, I think the golden eagles is a little bit of, I don't know I'm not an expert uh, that was it with the tarly but then I still had another day on my own where I hit the reservoirs and found some nice black bass in the reservoirs um, yeah I was really happy with the way it was going and then we welcomed uh, John was my first guest, and he arrived on the Tuesday. He was running Tuesday to Monday, thanks to EasyJet changing their flight plans. Uh, they know they decided to not run um, Tuesday to Tuesday or Wednesday Wednesday flights uh, after I booked it all. Uh, he lost a day for that. Um, first day, we went up to the river again. John's been here before, fished it before, loves it. Um, that was the wagon for the week, a Dacia Duster. wasn't a four-wheel drive, I was hoping, but it was an SUV, so it had good ground, good ground clearance. And it was fine. Eagles again. Uh, I had to trim eagles out of this video. I it would mostly be eagles because uh, they were so reliable, this trip. Uh, other than uh, once the rains came, that changed everything, even for eagles. We didn't see them once the uh, big storm came, which was towards a few, few days on yet um so what did we do didn't do so well there i think this was against us as well the, the bright sun uh, very clear water as you can see there um it's not conducive to good sand uh, and the barbel were just hiding uh didn't see a barbel all trip well we actually did see barbel didn't look any barbel all trip uh, but that wasn't a big deal because on the way back we dropped off to Rio uh, Real Villa Real del San Antonio, uh, town down on the border, on the mouth of the Guadiana, where the mullet are very reliable if you've got the settled weather and you can see how clear the water is there. Lovely blue water. Uh, this is an estuarine system, uh, and the mullet were there and very reliable. They were feeding hard on the little shrimps, and uh, John ran a small brown shrimp imitation and. Bag one straight away, <clears throat> about second cast. Um, he then sadly rolled on a stone 
and fell and smashed his knee very hard and it caused complications uh, which had implications for the rest of the trip. We bandaged it up, I leaned it, infection, no problem, but it actually was a deep wound that carried on bleeding. That was a lunch there in the Italian calf just opposite the guest house. Then on to the reservoirs where we did actually catch black bass. Uh, quite, They were still feeding quite happily. and had the big rain yet, not the big rain. Um, that was Surf and Turf at Pitao. Uh, Pitao Bakes at Demar, a lovely restaurant. Uh, always quality, good prices. And then it was boat trip day. Um, the first boat trip day with John, it was it was all right. It wasn't amazing. Cuttlefish there on the lure. Um, comber on the lure. We didn't catch so much cast in the lure, so I started drop shotting them. Me and John, we just started drop shotting them. Um, Neil there, he was on the baits. He had various little breams. Uh, his skipper, Paolo, with a octopus. Uh, there was, I think we counted 14 different species on the baits and whatever, but for on the lures, it wasn't so exciting, that trip. Um, but uh, we went out again later in this uh, month, and it was much better. There's a greater weaver for John, actually, on the lures. Uh, I think it was a little couch's bream there for Neil on the baits. Uh, and that was the monkfish kebab. Oh, so good at GNO. Uh, which we had afterwards. Next day, we was off to a place called Lagos, about an hour's drive west. Uh, we went to meet former charter, New Haven charter skipper Frank Shaw, uh, who was down there with his caravan, and we had a look at the estuary there. That's a shoulder bass in the marina where we sat and drank very expensive coffee. Um, yeah, I, w I won't be rushing back. The, the estuary itself screamed fish. Uh, looked very, very good indeed, but it also had lots of go, don't fish signs that perhaps we shouldn't have fished, but we had a little quick go, but a lot of weed. Um, there's the dog Waffy, Frank's dog Waffy, uh, lovely dog there. And there's Frank himself, uh, head buried in his phone. I think he was looking at weather reports. Uh, so back to Oliao, lovely sunset, uh, classic tourist shot, that one. And then we have had a go on the early flood at night um, we, where we caught a nasty, sculpins, we caught spotted bass, uh, we caught regular bass, um, <coughs> new girlfriend. Uh, and the next day up, we had a look at the Beliche Reservoir. And this is a spot where we were launching boats two years ago. And it's dry. I mean, it's just a little river running through it, but it's, there's no reservoir there anymore. Uh, we did try another spot on the Belize, but it was uh, nothing doing, weren't feeling it. Went back to the old lady and caught some bass, um, black bass, uh, chunkers as well. Um, steep, slightly scary access in, in parts. Um, yeah, need to keep an eye with that. Um, having said that, we did find some better accesses later in the time. Lovely um, Estrella Galathea that they serve in the Italian cafe right outside the uh, guest house. And this is Olio. Um, they're so proud of their culture, and rightly so, and their heritage. Um, this was the council employed a street artist to portray the history of the, the town, the city, um, on the walls of the municipal buildings. And he did a very good job indeed. He's been there a lot of years, actually. Always been there since I started looking four years ago. So it's not a new piece, but it's, uh, yeah, a bit special. I um, I really like it. It's very good portrayal of the heritage. Storm carts the lot. More food. Uh, again, I think that's Pitao. Uh, again, I think that's the Surf and Turf. More street art. Amazing window there, painted on a wall. Oh, the prawns in orange sauce. Amazing. Uh, it's a regional speciality. Um, more surf and turf and rainbows because that was actually John's last night and we brought Simon into the frame now 
Uh, first thing we did was have a look for those mullet, but you can see the difference in colour in the river. Some heavy rain and it's coloured up and low pressure. And we found one little group of mullet, but they weren't particularly in, in um, feeding mood. But next day we headed up to the river, which was just nice actually. It wasn't uh, too coloured, it, it wasn't too clear, there wasn't too much sun, and it showed we, we actually had a few, few zander on this day. Um, yeah, and <laughs> you see a big smile on Simon's face. Uh, Xander were kind of the star of the, the trip up until the, the big rain. Um, and even then, actually, after then, there was still hope with them. Um, but even with the Xander, every fish well earned, they didn't throw themselves out, um, particularly. I've been playing uh, the fish very carefully. Uh, 3 to 15 gram nebula uh, lure, uh, light lure. No, no, lure, light game. Light game, light game they're called. 3 to 15 gram. Uh, lovely rod for this, absolutely perfect. And for all the sub 15 gram work on the bass in the Formosa as well. Really, really good for it. A uh, lovely light rod to hold for a long period of time. Um, compared to the N70, which is a bit of a broomstick, but uh, a broomstick you want if a beast comes along. Um, I'll be using that a lot shortly in Fuerteventura, but I will also be taking these light games because we found some um, immature dusky groupers and things like that. It's good fun on the small shafts, even in broad daylight. Uh, Cracking Zander is landing right now. Um, nice fish, about, I don't know, six pounds, something like that. Um, he was happy, I was happy for him. Um, off we went. Nature everywhere you look, have a sit there. Um, I remember getting excited about them as a kid at Minsmere Reserve in Suffolk and they're, they're everywhere. Green frog, which is significant. I put that in because I do think that uh, the majority of our black bass come on green things. And I think green's particularly good because they some association with the frog, something like that. Because we've watched them hunting the frogs in the in the grasses before now. Always beautiful sunsets up that way. Uh, farm pond with some little little bass which were lightning fast. We had a lot of hits from them, but they were so fast, hard to hook. Lunch in fast food style, and then we was up the very top of the Guardiana. Well, not the very top, but well up the Guardiana. Uh, we spent a bit of time up there, but we went for feeling it. We didn't get a single sniff of fish. Didn't see any life. Uh, so we come back to the regular spot where bangs and uh, Simon's back into the Xander again. Um, yeah, this was good fishing actually this period, to be fair. Um, and worth going up there every day while the fishing's like that, it would have been. Uh, but of course life doesn't work out like that. Um, so Simon had this one, lands this one. <laughs> There's uh, nasty ledges there, so everything's doing, keeping the rod high, keeping the fish's head up, is it all the things you need to do. Um, it wouldn't take much for them to s s s splash against a rock. Should we have a long handled drop net, uh, landing net there? Uh, we've, we've got one with us, but it's not a great mesh, uh, to be honest. And I think for these fish, probably it's better for them if you just beach them. There's little Vs you can beach them in. That's what Simon's doing now. And, uh, yeah, they don't come to any great harm in them. And the black bass especially not, because they're put, like regular bass, they're bulletproof. <laughs> but there's still the flotsam from the Vs. It's not because he's rolled it in anything. Um, yeah, not not huge sander, but healthy and fit. Like all of them, actually, in amazing condition. And then, bang, look, he's in again. I think he loses this one. Sorry to spoil the party. Um, I remember he did lose one and I couldn't find a corresponding fish for this one so this might have been it uh, but I also had a nice fish so uh, I've hijacked the end of his footage because I suddenly switched off and I wouldn't have done that if, if the fish was still attached I'm fairly sure lost this one so uh, I banged one of my better ones on the end, which I think we had in, in, in these days as well. Made the mistake with this video of, of using two different devices and the time and date stamps don't seem to quite 
drop together as I hope they would to make my life easy putting a video together uh, but I'm fairly sure it was on the same day uh, this was definitely a good fish but then I think about here somewhere Mm. Yeah, so there's one of mine. Good one, that one as well. Proper chunk, really heavy. Back on the reservoir the next day, back on the black bass. Uh, he got one on a fly, Simon. He did very well with that. Got one on the fly with um, a booby and a fast sink line and short leader. Uh, that's a barbel in front of me coming along too. I saw this day with the bright sun. Um, and the reservoir hadn't. Oh, of course, we haven't had the rain yet. No, of course, yeah. This is all everything looking really good, like looking really good. Um, when you've got the barbel coming up on the ledges, it's a sign that the, the kind of whole system is starting to come to life with the warm sunshine. Um, I know when we hired the very good uh, guide, Marco um, De Silva, who uh, runs a fly fly guiding operation that we used the first year we were out there. Uh, that's exactly what we were looking for, the barbel being up on the ledges like that. So with it looking so good, that night we had a huge thunderstorm and look at that thick chocolate water. Uh, the beach we couldn't even get to if we wanted to. And that began in the beginning of the end. Nice bass in the reservoir just above. Um, and then even after catching that, a huge wind came along, like literally minutes after that fish. We couldn't fish anymore. Um, so we next day had a look at the cove of the 20 pound bass that was out of order due to weed and so that led us to the estuary at Portimao, uh, a place I've looked at and wanted to try for a long time and, and Simon was up for investigation so we had to go here um, and we found fish actually, um, nothing huge in fact <laughs> in this particular case, particularly not huge but a fish, a bass. Um, even here, that you can see the rainwater was starting to affect the estuary. Um, I mean, it just affected everything. But just some things more slowly, like the big reservoir I would late. It took a couple of days for the runoffs to reach, but that's a bass just dropped off there, which then retrieved through a picture. Huge fish there. <laughs> but it was a bass. I, I had two others a little bit bigger off the same spot. Uh, and then that evening, we gave it full full bore on dusk, a uh, beautiful sunset. And, uh, yeah, we caught um, regular bass, spotted bass, spotted bass for both myself and for uh, Simon that night, which is good, ticked off the list. Uh, yeah, it was a good night. And then regular bass again. And then uh, back for some food, and then next morning off again. And this time we went up the very top of the Odd Lake, a um, place that I hadn't fished before. We just pulled it off Google Earth, as a likely. And I was hoping for barbel up there, but uh, the only actual fish we caught was this beast of a blackmouth bass to my rod. Um, good four pound plus, beast one I've ever caught or seen, to be fair. Um, I was well, well pleased with that fish of the trip for me, really. Um, and then last morning for Simon, we got on it uh, and caught again. Uh, beautiful sunrise and fish. Couldn't get better than that. Nice way to say goodbye to Simon. Um, because then Simon was away to be replaced by um, Jamie and Paul. Uh, first afternoon, lovely sunrise there to say goodbye. Jamie and Paul, first afternoon we went up the reservoir, one little bass to me, and then the reservoir, that particular reservoir pretty much shut down. That's the main thing. Had a look at the next day, had a look at COVID the 20 pound bass, which as you can see was absolutely unfishable with swell and weed. So, um, stunning to see, but no need for fishing. Uh, so again we moved on, we went to, back to the estuary of Portimao, because it was up that way. I was hopeful um, for more action, uh, but no, I think as more and more rainwater came down, less and less fish were likely to be there. Mullet were there in better numbers because it was a cracking day, really warm, very good high pressure. Um, so the pools behind were filled up with mullet, which would have suited um, Simon with the fly rod. 
Uh, but no good. But the nightlife were always good. Um, the PA bar, where a nice mix of expats and locals, uh, not too staged. Uh, next morning, we tried um, Villarreal del San Antonio, and this time we did get to the end without any tumbles. Cat out there, We've got back to cat feeding stations out there, they're very looked after. Um, so maybe 20 anglers out there, not, not, no fish caught, one little bream caught. Uh, we went up to look at the river it was too much we went to this reservoir above where that was the second black math bus and the last of the whole trip um as even this one shut down on us after that fish um we did have a nice feed up there though uh next day uh jamie was done his cold got so bad he had to have a day off rest he really was he'd, he'd given everything he was shattered absolutely shattered so I went out with Paul. We went up the top end. Um, did find plenty of signs of summer, including lots of carp in the edges of the surprisingly clear water. It's very clear the water up the top there. <clears throat> um, so had we had fly gear with us, we could have probably done something, but we didn't. <laughs> we just had the lure gear and, and nothing really that would have got their attention. Um, opportunity last, I don't know, we can catch up everywhere so not not so exciting perhaps but it was good to see fish life anyway uh beautiful to be up there but no nothing doing at all um you know stunning scenery up the top there no you don't see any much man-made stuff uh but i kept pulled out kept all going we went on to then to the seaside where he did actually catch his first fish sadly it was a, a very poisonous sea sculpting uh sculpting fish uh glorious sunset though um and at least he's off the mark with that. Next day, Jamie was much better, uh, much recovered for this rest. Um, it was boat day, and this boat day, he became the superstar, actually. He, t he stole the show. Uh, there's Paul unhooking first of many comba, or redfish, as we were calling them. There's Paolo the skipper with a small couch's bream. Uh, Atlantic mackerel on a 28-gram mighty minnow on my rod. Comba on a small one on a 14-gram, I think. Um, there's Paul with a swallow, very beautiful fish. First time I've seen them. Um, absolutely stunning colours, pearlescent. Oh, so beautiful. Um, and then Jamie was on his way. Nice uh, saga, or some bream there. Uh, then on to the swallows. Uh, then I managed uh, a male dentex, and the very next cast I got the female, perhaps of the same pair. Um, and then I actually got hit probably about another eight, um, which destroyed my lures. Uh, Jamie's on his way, double shot swallows, more sargo or bream, brandy bream, whatever that is. Uh, he then had a double shot of male dentex, which is amazing. Um, and then this, his main event was this great big grey trigger fish, uh, stunning fish. So, uh, yeah, he happily he got some cracking fish on the trip. Um, because it, uh, close to shore it had gone absolutely rock hard um, and, and remained rock hard really for the rest of the day. Um, we had uh, cracking lunch when we got back at the GNO. Guess what? It was monkfish kebabs again. I uh, just can't be off them. They're so good. Um, that night, though, we went out for dinner at Otasco, which is just out the back over towards the Marina Village side of uh, Oliao. Amazing start to that. Ch chili squid was stunning. The tatar tuna tataki there was stunning. Uh, the steaks were good. Uh, the chips, well, could do better. <laughs> but they were edible. <laughs> I won't knock them too hard. Uh, but everything else was absolutely amazing. Um, really, really good. Uh, always beautiful sunsets up there as well. Uh, I worked the reservoirs to death with the guys, um, but we didn't catch any more. We saw things. So there's, I think this is smooth snake, actually, in the end. What we're seeing here um it just was there running going across the path and then you know where it was off to so it went nothing dangerous about it i don't think uh good to see um that night we had the octopus cataplana which uh in the uh frango del cidado uh, out again stunning sunset but uh, i think we didn't do so good that night uh oh no we did actually no i say we did no no paul did paul's really getting the hang of the bass now especially the finger and he's picking up those 
taps that there suddenly weren't so many of. <clears throat> and he did actually manage one. Um, next night we tried the same event, but uh, there was a club outing on the on the mark, so we just went out for dinner that night, where we experienced the uh, Portuguese sausage, uh, a flambe experience to behold. Wow. Tell me if I was <laughs> fun, actually. Wow. <laughs> this is a show. <laughs> Lovely warm evening as well. <laughs> and the sausage. <laughs> Unlike the next morning, which was absolutely freezing. Uh, well, not freezing, but we did record temperatures as low as six degrees on the journey up to this spot uh, which was back to the river we thought we'd have a look a week now since the big rain um, and the river actually was quite low I would call it low but the colour was still there I, I wasn't holding out too much hope um, I put the guys on the Xander hole where the dead water is I fished the fast water hoping for that barbel that we haven't seen all trip and of course um, there's a cichlid that uh, Jamie found washed up of course <laughs> the one Xander that did get hooked was sitting in the fast water and it caught to my line and it was an absolute belter again another one like heading towards double figures um, just absolutely stunning fish in prime condition absolutely prime condition uh, I was lucky uh, straight away I swapped the guys but that was it the only fish but uh, we did get up to the restaurant uh, which was stunning, and the beer was sold served in frozen glasses, which made Paul a very happy man. Um, <laughs> you can actually see contentment there. And we all celebrated that night, uh, including my friend Maggie, we invited, or I invited out, and so much so that we lost the next day. <laughs> but that gave us just the last evening, back to the Bass Mark uh, in the Formosa for the last evening. Uh, I had a spotted bass and Paul nailed, once again he nailed uh, quite a tidy bass um, all off the finger. So he, he's got the hang of that, one major benefit of the tour. And then it was off to say goodbye to friends, old and new. This one very new, just turned up on the street. Um, clearly someone owned the dog, it was very looked after and it wasn't in any panic. And then that's it, back to Blighty, end of the tour. Uh, once again, very hard fishing, every fish earned. Weather did mess it up unexpectedly. But are we doing it all again? I think everyone's rebooked. Uh, more on that soon.